Well, I think it's been a long, tiring day for all of you all, hearing a lot of uh, stuff, seeing a lot of visuals. I think uh, most of you people would like to be on the shop floor or in the offices. But I think what you all have all learned throughout the day has been pretty important. Am I right? No. Ah, oh, that's, that's good, that's good. Well, just to give you a brief introduction, Forbes Facility Services is part of the Shapurji Palunji company. We are part also of Eureka Forbes, okay? And uh, this company was formed, Forbes Facility Services was formed in 2004, okay? We were, essentially Eureka Forbes was into selling of equipments, but subsequently, customers started asking us why don't you also provide the manpower because most of you might be aware that providing manpower and providing the equipments are two very important things. A lot of our good friends here earlier have spoken about uh, the processes, the cleaning, the machines, the chemicals and uh, at the end of the day we also deal with manpower because without them we can't do our work. Just a short introduction about Forbes, okay, which is there for you all to see. I'll skip most of the slides. Eureka Forbes has been in operation since 82, present globally right now. A number of products which we have, which most of you might be using also, is the aqua guards and the vacuum cleaners for your usage, factories, home. As I mentioned to you, Forbes Facility Services, 100% subsidiary of Eureka Forbes, established in 2004, and in 2007 it became Forbes Facility Services. This is the prime vision of the company, a help, happy, healthy, safe and pollution-free environment built on trust and lasting relationships with our customers. Of course, we have a vision to be the leaders in the field of facility services, to encompass non-core business activities of our customers, targeted segments, and high growth with lifetime relationships with the stakeholders. This is something which we would like to share with you, what we are into facility management. We look after commercials, hospitality, healthcare, and entertainment. Shopping avenues, retail, office premises, industries, and non-commercial. We tell the customer, which I'm sure many of you also talk about, is your non-core activities are our core business. I think all of you here in the facility management would be sharing the same views, right? These are the businesses that we are into, mechanized housekeeping, industrial catering, technical services, hospitality services, plumbing, carpentry, other ancillary services. This is how we go about our operation module, facility management, solutions architecting, and system integration, domain expertise, segments of automotive, healthcare, petroleum, power, education. We also operate through an external franchisee module, we have partnership, our group company with Eureka Forbes. We have our services in 46 cities across the country. We operate through our SAP system, which makes it facilitates easier management for accountings and everything. These are some of the compliances that we follow, certifications. These are some of our esteemed customers, if you see. We have people like Imsofer, Bharat Forge, Mahindras, Cummins, Virgin, Hummingbird, Ginger, we also do all their pr projects. I come now to the presentation that we are talking about, the need to outsource services for effective results, achievements and shortfalls. Though I've kept shortfalls as short as possible, 
But I'm sure most of you will agree with me that we have a lot in common where shortfalls are concerned. Okay, achievements, yes. Uh, again, I'll come back to that lady over here, though early. The most easiest thing is to change the services. That's actually the most hardest thing to do. Okay, because many times I talk to the clients and I ask them, I said, it's better the known devil than an unknown angel. Okay, coming back to earlier what Colonel Prem Anand and uh, Dr. Rao, and of course the gentleman Mr. Savan, right, from uh, Switzerland mentioned cleaning. And I was very happy to realize that when Colonel said, Cleanliness is godliness. This young lady asked me in the morning, what do you think of cleaning? And I said the same sentence. And that's something what we have grown up with. We have been taught from birth what uh, Mr. Savan said, from birth we are clean and given to the mother. And somewhere along the line we forget the basic concept that we have grown up with, cleaning. Why? Have we become so negligent or you know very complacent to the fact that we need to clean or to keep our places clean we might all put up our hands and say that no we clean we are clean but the places we are to clean those people are not in tune with us is that the case I look at it this way cleaning is an important indicator of a company's culture I'm sure many of you will agree with me though some may not but Cleaning indicates the company's modernity and vision to change. It's a measure of collective freedom in which we celebrate a sense of respect for human beings and from which we can start to plan the future. This is what companies are supposed to be talking about. Cleaning in a modern and possibly more refined interpretation embodies a sense of a state of positive behavior. Do you all agree with me on this? I don't think. Thank you. Clean encompasses a wide gamut of activities. Clean play, clean business, clean look. I won't read the next one. And clean conscience. OK. Because that's a hot topic. It's a measure of collective freedom in which we celebrate a sense of respect for human beings. And from which we can, again, it's, sorry, that's a repetition. Three main indicators that precisely determine the degree of development or under development of a place is maintenance of the plant, open spaces and infrastructure. Everybody is into facility management. And all those who are from the industry will surely agree with me that this is what is the core of our business. When a client has visitors, the first thing they want is housekeeping done. The first thing that they look for is a pl clean place. And the most important thing, they don't mind if we shove the dirt under some furniture or something or the other. Right? Second thing is what they look at is open spaces. All these MNCs which have come into India who talk about cleaning, the first thing that they have, any visitors coming, the first thing that those visitors look for, how clean is the place, how well it is it maintained, or they reject. Another thing which happens is a lot of their rejection, the material rejection, is attributed towards the cleaning or lack of cleaning rather. They blame us. And that is something which we need to look at and talk about. If the surroundings of the workplace are dirty, we perceive them as acceptable and feel more authorized to maintain bad behavior or worse, develop a culture indifference and non-caring attitude towards the problem. It is undeniable that an organization that offers clean and well-lit areas with proper production facilities and right infrastructure which is well-planned and maintained is an organization where individuals are more inclined towards interactions. Two more key aspects of value cleaning expertise like Mr. Sunil spoke in the morning, Mr. Prashant spoke later on, and of course, Mr. Ramesh spoke much later. His expertise in the use of the products and the training. We all want to be cleaning people, but are we doing the right thing? We spoke of, uh, Mr. Ramesh spoke of sinner cycle, which is so very apt. 
we talk of time, temperature, mechanical action, chemical action. And ultimately is the process, the method. We use anything wrong in all that and the wrong process. We end up back to square one. And then the client is unhappy. I spoke earlier of cleaning. Cleaning has to be looked at as an absolute value. Not something where we have spoken of earlier as the last item on the buyer's budget or the purchaser's budget. Because this is where we are always struggling. We struggle to get our allocations towards the budget for facility management. Why? Because companies look at production, they look at infrastructure, they look at everything else but the housekeeping budgets. I think it was Ramesh who spoke of 0.2% to 0.5%. But I don't even believe that they are using that much of their revenue. I don't think it could be even 0.1%. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But it's definitely much lower than what we expect. And sad to say, I'll come back, I'll rather come to the shortfall. One of the most important things is today we are facing difficult times in all the industries, especially the automobile industry. And unfortunately, the first thing that they look at is cutting down on the housekeeping budgets. If I'm wrong, please put up your hands. The first thing they, they do is cut down. And what do they ask for? He mentioned cut down manpower. Cut down the chemicals. Cut down the consumables. Or don't use machines. I mean, what do you want then? Or we are talking about cleaning hygiene solutions, then I think we need to use the right way and we need to really explain to them, make them aware that they need to change their attitude towards housekeeping or facility management. What happens when they are outsourcing? We are talking about outsourcing. It's cost effective. Actually, outsourcing adds a lot of profitability to their business because when you outsource a significant impact on the bottom line, immediate cost savings in part because of expert cleaning people, people who have got the knowledge of what they are doing, they get more done in less time. Okay. A professional maintenance company, company procures optical pricing on equipment supplies. They don't have to, the customer does not have to waste time in negotiating all those things. It's the housekeeping facility people who do that. Outsource cleaning services benefit the administration, healthcare, employee status, verification, all these things are taken care of by the facility company. Okay. These time intensive tasks become the responsibility of the building service contractor. Responsive cleaning service contractors understand the many options when considering outsource cleaning services. A janitorial company will work hard to get and keep the business. I think that is what we all look for. We want to maintain business and not be changed. Nobody likes to lose their business. Likewise, a sizable company can adjust to accommodate the changing needs quite easily, whether adding people or at peak times. I'm sure again everybody will agree with me that all of a sudden in the evening we get intimation from the client saying that tomorrow there's a big visit. So all we put more manpower, we try to clean, we try to put more machines and do that. So the next day, it's good. And then, sad to say, the housekeeping company is forgotten after the visit. I mean, right? Any people from the industry over here, from the hardcore industry where we are providing services, who will not agree with me? Experience, again, outsourcing cleaning services to professional cleaning company means you get better work done in less time. Professional cleaning company will employ the most advanced and efficacious methods to get the job done right. Okay. Industry specific cleaning like healthcare services or green options, professional company can help you explore choices. Transfer of management intensive duties to service contractors. Managing of your cleaning operations become the contractor's responsibility. 
staffing issues, many companies outsource such things like the pantry boy, the uh, operator, the front desk operator, all these things are taken care of by the facility company. With someone else handling these responsibilities, you can lighten your load and your staff and the person concerned can concentrate on their core duties. Transfer of liability insurance costs to the cleaning service contractor. Due to the nature of the work, there are specific liabilities associated with cleaning staff. All these require money and time. This is outsourced. I mentioned this in very, very bold. In today's specialized business environment, more and more companies are turning to outsourcing the handle to handle parts of their operation that are outside the scope of their business. Janitorial or building maintenance services are one such area where a towering workload, tight budgets, and lack of expertise make outsourcing an important option to consider. I hope I'm there with everybody, or rather everybody is with me. I don't hear yeses. Then we'll do it the English way. We'll say A, yeah. not A, not A. <laughs> I, I, I don't, you know, it's very often that I've been into seminars and at such moments at the end of the day when you have had a good lunch and everything, I've also fallen asleep. So this time I'm on the other side. I don't mean anybody's doing that, but what are achievements for outsourcing? Eliminate problems associated with using your own employees to tackle business building maintenance. Shift the management and liability to a knowledgeable outside contractor. Eliminate costs associated with procurement, maintenance, inventory, equipment, supplies, uniforms, all these things are taken care of by the housekeeping company. Getting expert service with the most up-to-date equipments and products. Those so products, uh, by the way, I have been associated with cleaning for the past 16 years. As I said, I was I've been with Forbes for the past two years plus, and I've been earlier with Eureka Forbes for hardcore equipments, which earlier my friends from Karcher were sharing. I've uh, been associated with industrial cleaning machines, the ones which you've seen out here. So when we look at cleaning, we are talking about the right equipment to be used. Please bear in mind very often it happens that we try to compromise to suit the budget of the customer by using the wrong equipment. That is something which you, if you want to survive in the business, you need to look at the right equipment for cleaning. Please do not compromise on this, whether it is the industry or whether it's a facility company. You have to use the right equipment. Like Mr. Sunil said, the right accessory and of course, like what Mr. Rame said, the right chemical with the right dosings and everything, because that's when you'll get the best results. When it comes to janitorial services, the best and most efficient cleaning and maintenance is done by people who have made it their main focus. Outsourcing services to the right company will save time and money. It will shield you from the added liability and headaches associated with managing additional employees whose duties are outside the scope of normal business. There's something very, very uh, funny, I'll call it funny, which I have come across when we deal with the industry, is that they say, itna admi ne aaj, shortage hai. Tera cleaning barabar ne hai. If it was so good, and we were so very 100% effective, then why wouldn't they do it themselves? Right? Why have they outsourced it? Because it's a major headache for them. And this is something which I told one company. I said, you're telling us that up, we accept today at the drop of a hat, manpower disappears. Okay? If I give him 50 rupees more, the manpower will come to me. Right? Or if they have to run, run away, they will go to their gown for farming or whatever it is, or they will go to XYZ state back. And we are struggling to achieve because that's something which is looked at for. 
individual employee, a professional company, the entire business reputation hinges on their doing the job right every single time. It's not that we do the job once today and I'm accepted as a very good housekeeping company. Every day the job has to be done the right way. A professional company will employ state-of-the-art cleaning methods, equipment, superior products to make sure you and your employees and customers have a healthy and safe surrounding. They are able to scale up or down the amount of cleaning at the workplace depending on the client's needs, depending on the urgencies, depending on the situations, given situation at any time. Like I said before, if there are major visits and we do face them. As a sizable facility maintenance company, the employees are cross-trained, so individual absenteeism doesn't affect the facility services. Yes. Which one? The previous slide? That's exactly. That is for the client, the, the customer. If they are outsourcing the services, if they are not outsourcing and they need more people, they have to go out. They have to get a recruiter to go out and get people to run the business. But when they have outsourced it, when they have outsourced it, I am in charge of the site. They only have to call me up and tell me that there is an extra service required. I arrange for the manpower. So that's a phone call away. But so, you know, this point is somehow, because I'm, I'm, I'm in the company, I'm hired as a service provider. Yes. In my company. I have this problem. Yes. Okay, then the, the, the shortfall of manpower, uh, the typical training is not given to these associates who are doing the cleaning job. So I, I face this problem almost every 10 days, I would say. Okay. Okay. I give them a phone call. Right. You know, but the problem still persists. And I say this for last one and a half years. Okay. So 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 I have to agree with this one. I'm sorry. Fair enough, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, see, we are not, it's not a one way monologue. I fully ex appreciate what you're saying. But then again, but then again, it's a question of how the service provider looks at that business. Are they taking that business for granted? Are they ready to respond? Okay, because we do have these situations. As a company, as Forbes, we do have these situations where the client says, tomorrow there's a visit. We need to get people, we mobilize them. We get them and we go there. Because our reputation is at stake. I cannot afford the CEO of that company calling up my CEO and saying that you all have let us down. So it's a question of, it's a question of how the service provider looks at that company. Do they want to retain that business? Do they feel that they are important enough to provide them that service? Or they are okay with it? And then, yes, I'm sorry ma'am, we come back to what she said earlier. <laughs> Change the agency. And if that's the case, I might meet you later. <laughs> Pardon? It's working. It's working. Yeah, but this gentleman has had patience for one and a half year. <laughs> no, I mean, see, there's a lot of seriousness. I mean, it's a very, very um, uh, valid, very strong point that you have mentioned, you have put up, and yes, it's not acceptable. It is definitely not acceptable. I can, we can understand once happening, twice happening, but if you talk of this happening regularly over a period of time, then it's, it tells on your service to your own company. You're accountable. And that's not something which is today easily acceptable in the industry. We'll talk about that point later. Again, I say professionalism. Cleaning services companies employ knowledgeable and well-trained individuals who are responsive, 
who are well aware of how to clean, maintain different types of production areas. There are different areas which are sensitive, critical, which are open, okay? Different types of problems, different types of people who respond to you. Oh, I would like to share one point. We are doing services with one of our key customers and they have their services or rather their tea breaks and lunch, uh, tea breaks, I beg your pardon, at the job. And those people eat and throw their food around the place, which is sad. They throw the plastics across the place. We have collected, our boys have collected those cups of tea, the empty cups, 70 or 80 glasses, glasses, not even teacups. So this is not the management's fault, this is the people. Unfortunately, people say in the facility company, your janitors, your janitors, but those are the, most of them are unskilled. They are not knowledgeable. If they were, they wouldn't be in those situations. But they are there because of circumstances. But it's people who are skilled, working on machines, who are doing this. So we have to deal, this is another concern, grave concern area which we have to deal with with the clients. And unfortunately, these are one of the problems where the clients are also outsourcing. Because they have to deal otherwise with them, these problems themselves. Safe cleaning methods due to the different types of materials like Mr. Ramesh has said, professionals know what type of cleaning methods are used. Okay, We also have to keep updated with the new machines which come in, different procedures, different types of chemicals, and how to clean them, how to get best out of them because we have got to, again, the dozing systems. Mr. Ramesh, we'll be requiring your dozing systems. There are so many things involved in cleaning. It's a lot of science is there in that. It's not just taking a mop, doing a wet mopping. Even that has a skill required, the training, the right training, how to use a mop. Because you use a mop, you can just keep walking with it, and you'll have dirt left over there. So there's the art of doing that. They've done proper studies to know the suitable methods to use to wash, scrub, wipe, or damp dry specific areas of the plant office, depending on the texture. We have talked about flows, hard flows, carpet flows, concrete, epoxy flows, or the sensitivity required. Business focus. Outsourcing cleaning services for a business makes the employee have time to run their own business, engage in revenue bringing activities instead of having extra worries on their hands. Cleaning companies do regular assessments of the business premise to determine if there is a need to increase cleaning staff capacity so one does not have to worry about the increase in scope of work. That's your point, sir. Reliability of service. Cleaning services are flexible in terms of manpower and time. Since they have options in terms of staff availability, emergencies, issues, that would affect one staff from reporting to duty will not affect the business since a replacement is always available. This is a reliable way of ensuring that the service goes uninterrupted. Shortfalls. The contract cleaning industry generally has a poor reputation of its own doing. Lack of supervision, running out of cleaning products, poor or little management contact, Lack of quality control, lack of health and safety and risk assessment. Color coding, Ramesh. Color coding, high staff turnover, poorly trained, trained staff. These are just some of the reasons potential clients give us for current dissatisfaction with their service provider and then wanting a change. These results are generally caused by overloading the contract managers. Portfolios which means instead of being proactive, their days are spent being reactive and firefighting. Very important thing is they cut down. They cut down on manpower because of their cost. And then they say, the job is not done. I've been integral in this discussion with many companies. They say, cut your cost down. The next thing they look at is manpower. 
I have one very simple thing to say is I probably can do two jobs okay? maybe because I'm paid for it but can a janitor do that no he'll collapse or he won't turn up the next day so this is something which we need to talk to the client and emphasize that we cannot put pressure on them first of all we pay them probably just about the minimum wages that to the clients many of the clients don't want them to be paid that much so what happens then how do we survive the most easiest thing they do is they say that they are running now at one shift so cut down your manpower cut down your cost cut down consumables and at the end of the day where the, there's no profitability we are struggling to survive due to recession in many industries the first area to have its budget cut is housekeeping am I right on this housekeeping which affects the service provider as a manpower has to be reduced it unnecessarily puts strain on the janitors who end up absconding from work countering hazards in the industry we have a single window solution time and motion steady we use a time and motion steady we have specially engineered scope uh, sorry standard operating procedures on-site training internal and external audits satisfied clients at the end of the day it's a win-win situation we have many of our clients who are there with us for six seven years and they are there with us yes the haggling goes on the price cutting goes on the uh, I use the soaps cereal tutu me me goes on okay and at the end of the day they are with us because of the known devil dry cleaning this applies to areas where no cleaning liquids are used and cleaning is only by vacuum cleaners dusting cloths brooms brushes control wet cleaning applies to areas that are defined as dry during processing although some wet cleaning is permitted there are many sensitive areas in a plant where you cannot have cross contamination especially in food industries you cannot use machines from one area to another all these things require a very clear cut discussion prior to taking contracts prior understanding the clients needs drying of all surfaces after control wet cleaning is essential we're talking about free fall slip fall these are problems which are hazardous wet cleaning applies to areas where the entire room or zone is always cleaned wet the contains equipments cable trays ceiling walls are wet washed without restrictions on the amount of cleaning liquid used we're talking about cost cuttings as far as consumables are concerned but we have to use that otherwise we cannot clean and it will be unacceptable all cleaning equipments including hand tools brushes and etc larger equipments should remain in high risk and be color coded to differentiate between high and low risk equipment if necessary special provision should be made for the storage of such equipment when not in use very often we find our equipments are misused by the clients people it's left over there we don't have storage spaces they go and they misuse cut the wires or do anything I mean it's unfortunate but this is the value that they place on their workplace because they damage equipments which we have supplied and it's unfortunate because it all costs money to repair that cleaning chemicals should preferably be stored in a purpose-built area efficient frequent cleaning and disinfection operations are necessary to prevent microbial contamination reaching a high level Mr. Prashant is not here. I think he's uh, okay. I would like to say one thing very clear. He made a very valid point. He showed us some slides which brought out a major problem we have is the toilet cleaning. I have been involved with chemicals, so I am fully aware of this problem wherein the drains, the pipelines, they talk about toilet smelling. And it's a fact you go to any industrial toilet the office toilets will be good okay but the industrial toilets unfortunately 
it could be the ventilation or most often it's the uric acid which has dried and stuck to the urine urinal or the it comes emanates from the drain pipes because that uric acid once it solidifies it sticks to the pipes the bends and the elbows in the pipes and the smell comes from there it's not because the toilet is not clean no matter how much of chemicals you use the smell is still going to come back because unfortunately our noses are very sensitive I don't have that slide with me but I could have shown you how fast the nose can smell that foul smell it's very very sensitive so toilet cleaning is one of the major areas where we have unfortunately many places lack of support from the client which we are trying to change we ensure that everyone from management to production workers understand sanitation this is one of the most important points management they are busy with their core activity which is production workers are busy with their core production they are not bothered about sanitation lead to improve sanitation practices and conditions in the plants provide a consistent training tool for employees we follow the 4M at the workplace this is what Mr. Ramesh earlier mentioned as it's normally in engineering terms it's called sinner cycle it, we call it the 4M machine material manpower and methodology and of course at the end the process if it is done the right way you get the right results there was something which once a German taught us during one of our training sessions he said practice makes perfect do you all agree with that I don't agree that's right it's perfect practice that's make makes perfect because I could be practicing something perfectly which is wrong and I'll say I'm perfect in that so please you can carry this home with you perfect practice makes perfect of course many of us if we go home and tell our wives that won't be accepted please avoid it <laughs> a four-point system for making a difference at the workplace study the workplace scientifically and set mutually accepted standards train the people to know what and how to deliver these standards plan the work and work according to the plan measure customer satisfaction aim for a minimum of 90 percent score we use a scoring sheet to get the customers feedback most of our people always dread that getting the customers feedback because invariably they will not want to score but we use that as a tool as a benchmark to take our levels higher this is something which we do it's a time and motion study we study our people we have internal ISO trained people who do time and motion study plan out everything they, they check out the frequencies and everything in the plant before we can come up with a proposal and work out the right situation we have our engineered scope of work or standard operating procedures the entire charts the maps how we go about it for the different areas standard operating policies we have which we follow and this is not just a slide put up because we follow it it's audited internally and externally because again I would like to share this with you as a company as a corporate company belonging to the Shapoji Palunji group we cannot let our reputation go down this is again the job cards which we use at sites what are the different types of cleaning schedules on-site training the different topics so this is I think this slide would answer and it's done rigorously I'm a part of that audit group which checks whether this is done
these are some of the results Bharat Oman refinery safety award for incident free housekeeping Jajar power plant this is in the north again safety award for incident free housekeeping Bharat Forge Mundwa, very happy to share with you, they have, they gave us the award as the best service provider this year. This was the first time in the history of Bharat Forge ever done that they have provided an award and an award of worth 5% of our annual business, which was a tremendous achievement. Considering Bharat Forge, I'm sure all of you must be aware of Bharat Forge as a company over here. And to please those people is no easy task. <laughs> Bajaj Motors at Aurangabad and JCB at Talegaon. We have been awarded these places. This result has come by maintaining the systems that we have been following for all these years. These results have been an award for the stringent processes that we have been following. Like I said earlier, internal audits, we have monthly audit checks, monthly MIS reports, external audits to determine the best site, best supervisor, best employee. Again, this is done to motivate people and to ensure that the client sees what is happening. This is how we have a site hierarchy. Unit heads, supervisors, machine operators, janitorial staff. Operational hierarchy, operations head. We have the gentleman sitting out there, Mr. Sudhir Mani. Training module, induction training. We have a three day induction training. Believe me, it's very difficult to have our people the janitor sitting for three days in a training. But we do it. Without that, they don't get paid. I mean, it's not a joke going to sending them out to a company and like this gentleman. So your name, please? Vijay Shirge, right. You had spoken earlier, you had spoken to. We cannot send them. We cannot get calls coming back saying what type of people you have sent. What type? I mean, they want people, they want good people, they want, I don't know, I don't know, they have not yet said they want qualified people. But they don't want to pay. So I think we can probably take a pledge to help them to understand our concerns. Internal, external, these are our actions which speak, defined quality and service standards, dedicated quality assurance staff, client satisfaction survey, performance course cards. The five S principles of housekeeping, segregation, this is what the clients have to understand. Distinguish necessary, unnecessary items and eliminate unnecessary items. Arrangement enables proper cleaning, storage systems which help us to clean better. Cleanliness eliminates dirt, dust, and foreign matter to make the workplace clean, maintenance of standards, combination of organization, order and cleaning as an ongoing program to maintain the workplace, and last but not the least, discipline, to ensure that everyone sticks to the rules scrupulously and makes it a habit. That, if we can achieve, it would be wonderful. Oh, this is something why I would ask the customers, why Forbes? its lineage, its brand, Forbes facility services as a centric, client-centric, value for money, trained manpower, cl clarity on accountability and responsibility. As we have the SAP system, everything is clear on paper. Periodic review, and our motto is you manage work, we manage your workplace. Thank you. Any 
So, yeah. Yes. Unfortunately, we only stay in general clinic. The methodology or the procedure required for cleaning the commodes or urinal pots or whatever called, it is somehow not existing in any manuals. Yes. And the second aspect is our training to the uh, that uh, lower staff yes. is awfully poor. That is the that is the problem where we need to address seriously. I have one question, sir. Yes, sir. Which company you are from? I am from an autonomous R&D center. Okay. Well, uh, there are two things involved in this. First of all, cleaning of the toilets okay. is a specialized job. Not every janitor is ready to do that. Okay. You'll agree. Okay. We have to pay them more. We have to pay them more. The second thing is, if I am training the janitor, I need to know first how to do it. So we have to understand the mechanism of how to train those people first. There's no manual, there's no written manual on how to clean it. But generally, there is in housekeeping. There is, as uh, my good friends from JD would talk, there are certain, but those are mostly attributed to the hotel or the hospitality industry. Because there you've got refined people going to the toilets. Okay? Whereas in an industrial environment, uh, I cannot, there are ladies around here, so I cannot demonstrate <laughs> how people use the urinals. But it was demonstrated to us during a training. It's unfortunate that they misuse it and like you said the toilets are not clean it's not the toilet the toilet is clean again if you use a chemical you have to let it rest for some time okay it has to go into the sides of the urinal or the WC yes it has to rest for some time at least 10 minutes if I'm right before you scrub it the place has to be wetted first. It has to be made wet. Then you apply the chemical, the right chemical. We cannot mix R2 is a toilet cleaner, R6. R6. Okay, people try to compromise, they use two, three chemicals. Okay. Use R6 less because it's costly, but use some other chemical because it's cheap, and then try to get the best out of it. It doesn't happen that way, sir. It has to be made wet. The chemical has to be applied. It has to be kept for 10 minutes at the most, and then scrubbed, and then rinsed. That is the process. But if one man has to do, let's say a toilet, a urinal bowl to clean, will take at least 15 minutes the right way. If that one boy, janitor, because we are talking about cost cutting, if we have one janitor trying to clean 20 urine bowls, how, what is he going to do? <laughs> Shortcuts. There will be no cuts, sir. <laughs> he skips. Yeah, of course. <laughs> he skips. He's human. No, it's practically not possible. That's right, ma'am. Practically not possible. It's possible with the right machines. It's possible with the right machines. Again, that's my good friend from Karcher. Yes. <laughs> that's, a that's exactly why we say you have to have professional people. It is possible. Do. A, a janitor can wash 10 bowls in 5 minutes. Yes. Absolutely. It is possible. Yes. Absolutely. Any janitor. <laughs> Any janitor. <laughs> Any janitor. Let's say a trained janitor. Yes. I think this is so what we do is we cut, we cut on the investment of machines that do it manually. See, the, we come back to one very basic thing. If I say I need this many high pressures to a client in a contract, I'm not. I'm just talking about high pressure. But when we talk, let's say, Salil will know very well. If we talk about cleaning as it is a cleaning scrubbing machine, there's a cleaning job, theoretically 2100 meters square per hour. Productive, actual productive will be 1000 square meters per hour. 
that's 10,000 square feet. The client wants us to do maybe 50,000 square feet in two hours. Is it possible? So what happens? The cost, I have to use two machines or three machines. The contract doesn't permit me to put three machines. So what do I do? I bring it down. I utilize that machine for eight, ten hours, and then Salil will be getting calls that the machines are broken down. Girish Pandey from there, my friend will get a call. Are kya machine diya yaar? Ye breakdown ho gaya. Poor machine. Now, these, these. Actually, that's the reason why we are setting in this forum. Yes. To actually understand the needs of the client, you as a service provider also trying to put forward the views that what is the correct combination. That's... It, what you have mentioned over there on, on the manpower, on the machines, on the material and on your methodologies, all those four make a combination. It can be without that. I mentioned in the earlier slide, you might have missed it, wherein we had mentioned that we need to understand their problems. Right, absolutely. We have to survey. There's no shortcut in that. There's no compromise in that. You got to survey and give them the right solution. The moment we compromise on that, then we are nowhere. One month, you'll get your money or you won't get your money. Second month, you won't get your money. Third month, you'll be saying, both ho gaya. <laughs> so this, this is what we face. I think we have one more question. Yeah. Uh, so, Sanya, this is Venkat from TCS. Yes, sir. Uh, what percentage of your staff does an attrition rate? <laughs> what percentage of my staff? Yeah. Okay. Sir, it's a sensitive issue. Very sensitive. I'm still there in the company. <laughs> <laughs> Not you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have. We do have a high attrition rate. We do have a high percentages. Uh, I will not be able to really give you very honestly, but it's high. But we have backup staff, and we keep them. The reason I asked is you said replacement will be available on a phone call basis. So that's important for us. We mobilize. We mobilize because we can't. We can't tell the client no, sir. We can't do anything. We, our uh, area heads, unit heads or the project executives, they go there during the night if there's a service, if there's a visit the next day, a high sensitive visit, they're there the whole night. They come back in the morning, they go for a short break, go back over there to the site and they're there to ensure that the visit goes smooth. And like I said, Bharat Forge, one of our most sensitive sites. Yeah, the follow-up question is, since uh, Osha's complaint, do you like to know who's a, who are your external auditors and do you share audit reports with the clients? <laughs> so the money, Mr. My colleague. Uh, yes, sir. We do share with the, our clients, but that too was the request. Because uh, I think you must have seen it. In one side, we were actually talking about finance and all. We as a service provider, we go to our clients and we help them with this finance. Uh, and since we are already, I have seen a Musa certified. I said yes, we do provide, but that to our request, sir. Because uh, as a cleaning partner, as a facility management partner, we are a part of it whenever they are going to be certified on this. And since we are already certified, so we help them with the position also. 